Hey, hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another exciting episode on the channel. I really hope you guys are doing well today, and I hope you're ready for episode 8 of the Colin Messenger series. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to fix a problem with our current application. And so let me show you what that problem is right now. And basically, inside of this emulator, we are showing all of the messages regarding user 4 and Jon Snow, right? But the problem is, if I go back and click on a different user, you'll see that same list of messages every time we switch over to a different user. And so the fix to this is to actually make our application display the messages based on the users that we click on, very similar to the finished version of our app on the right side. So you'll notice if I click on Hodor up here, uh, we only get one message between Hodor and Arya Stark. And if I go back and click on Jon Snow over here, you'll get a different set of messages, right? So in today's lesson, we are going to figure out how we can do this and more importantly, how we can modify our Firebase database structure to implement this feature. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with Android Studio right now. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Android Studio. And uh, the first thing I would like to do before I start any type of coding is just simply rerun my application. And let's click on new message at the very top. And if I click on user 04, you'll notice that all of the messages inside of this very long list, they are pretty much the same thing no matter which user I click into, right? So if I click into Igrit, all of these messages are pretty much the same as we saw before. And uh, this is the problem that we want to fix in today's video. And before I actually show you the fix, let me show you why this is happening because of the way that we've structured our Firebase database. And so basically what's going on here is that all of these messages inside of the screen, they're pretty much the messages that exist inside of this messages node right over here. And so if you pop open the last one, you'll see J-I-K, J-U, and that's pretty much the last message right over there. And so the way we can actually fix this is to introduce a different type of node structure for the messages, depending on which user we are communicating with. So for example, inside of this user messages node, we have a child node that belongs to a certain user, right? So if I open one of these nodes, you'll see that there is another child node that is underneath that. And basically for these two users, uh, user A and user B, we have a list of messages that belong to these two users. And so if I open up this, you'll see one message here, another message, and then finally a third message down at the very bottom. All right. So if you introduce this type of node structure, you can actually differentiate between all of the messages between uh, message partners inside of your application. And so what I would like to do now is to actually show you how we can create this user messages node inside of our code. And uh, the way we are going to actually introduce this code is to first look at the chat log activity over here, this file. And I'm going to, let's see, collapse this method called listen for messages because I don't really care about it so much right now. And let's head into the perform send messages code. And inside of here, we're actually creating a reference to the messages node. And we're calling this push thing that helps us create a new node. And basically we are introducing a new node every time we want to send a message inside of this list. And so I'm going to show you how we can fix this to introduce this new structure called user messages. And it's actually pretty easy. And so I'm going to do that right over here. And let me just copy that and comment that out. And let me just paste that right below. And so the new reference is going to be user messages like so. And I'm going to add something else to the end of this reference right over here. And that's going to be the from ID and also slash and to ID like that. All right, so the from ID comes from the Firebase auth UID. The to ID comes from the user's ID that we're trying to send this message to. Uh, in this case, it should be this Igrid user. All right, so that's the structure of the reference that we're going to get. And with that small little change, I can now run my application. And let me just show you what that does by killing off this user messages node. And let me just kill that off, hit the delete. That should go away. And now what I can do is I can message Egret right now. I'll just say ABC, hit the send, and you'll see that 
for the Jon Snow user of XXJ, we are messaging Ygrid, who is 2YD8. And inside of this, we have this new list of messages ABC. And let's say I go one, two, three, hit the send, and a new message is now being created under this list over here. So that's kind of how that works. And if I switch over to a different user, let's say I go into uh, user 04 and type in A, B, C, D, E, F, hit the send. You'll see that for this user, user 04, which is 1BMG, right over here we have a different message, which is A, B, C, D, E, F. All right. So with this list right here, we can sort of differentiate between the users inside of our system. All right, so hopefully that's not too confusing. And what we are going to do with this node structure right now is to also listen for the messages under this node. So what I mean is I'm going to go up to the method of listen for messages, and I'm going to modify the reference for which we are listening for things. And so for the messages, I'm going to use user slash messages like so, and I need the from ID and also the to ID like that, very similar to what we did in this bottom method over here. Okay, so the question now is what is the from ID? Well, we are going to get the from ID from the Firebase auth, get instance, and then we can say UID. Uh, the two ID we can actually get from our two user uh, that is a variable on this chat log activity. So two user is this guy over here, and the two user also has some kind of UID like so. Uh, I think one final fix is to introduce a question mark for the optional, and once we have those two properties, this reference is now being created successfully, and we can now run our project again. And so every time we enter the chat log activity now, we are going to list the messages based on the user that we click on. So you see for the user 04, we have A, B, C, D, E, F. And if we click into Igrit over here, we have those two different messages that we introduced a little bit earlier. So basically this node right here, A, B, C, and one, two, three. All right, so hopefully that's not too hard to follow. And one thing that you would actually have to fix right now is whenever you log out of Jon Snow currently and log into, let's say, Igrit, and let me just do that for you, igrit at gmail.com and punch in a password, log in. Basically for the Igrit user, if I scroll down to Jon Snow right here, you'll see that I don't have any messages between these two users right now, right? And that's kind of a problem we should actually be seeing the messages of 123 and ABC, right? Because we sent that from the Jon Snow account. And so the way that you actually have to fix this is for the method of perform send message inside of the chat log activity, we actually have to perform the reverse reference message save uh, somewhere inside of here. And so let me just show you what that looks like and it might be a little less confusing. All right, so let me copy this code and I will say paste over here, and this is the to reference, okay? And so the to reference here will be the reference for the user that we're actually sending the message to. All right, so let me just make the modification now, and it'll be a little bit easier to follow. I'm going to flip these around, so to ID is going to be over there, and then from ID will be at the end. And then with the to reference, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save the message kind of very similar to what we're doing over here for this reference up there. And so this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to say set the value and I'll set the value to the chat message that we're actually creating right over there. And so what happens is if I try to send the message now with this structure, you'll, to, you'll see two different nodes being created underneath this guy over here. And so let me just click on a new message. And remember, I am currently logged in as the user of Egret. And for Jon Snow, if I'm trying to message him, let's say message from Egret, that's my message. I'll hit the send over here. And you'll see that this node was actually created for my Egret user. So Egret is 2ID, XXJ is Jon Snow. And we get that message right over here. And if we look at Jon Snow, which is XXJ, Egret, and the last message is actually right over here, message from Egret. All right, with that small fix inside of our code now, 
Let me log out of Igrit and then log back into Jon Snow. So I already have account, let's say Snow at gmail.com, log back in. And so if I try to look at the message log between Jon Snow and Igrid, you'll see that that message is now showing up at the very bottom of our list. All right, so that's kind of how everything works, and hopefully you were able to follow along. Now, one nice fix that you would like to introduce inside of your application is whenever you click on the message right here, and let's say, you know, message from Jon Snow, if you hit the send right here, you actually want to remove this text whenever the send is actually complete. And so what I mean is inside of the completion handler, let's say over here, we can actually clear out the text. So text comes from this thing, edit text from chat log. You can just say that and say text, and you can clear out the text like so. Uh, let me try to run this app to make sure that that actually works. And we'll click on new message up at the top, click on Igrid, and let's say a, 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 and hit the send. And then once the send is done, the message is actually cleared out like so. And finally, one last thing that you can do is to automatically scroll to the very last message whenever you hit the send button over here, right? So you actually want to see the BBB whenever you click that button. And that's actually pretty easy to do. You want to head back into the code and after the clear, you can actually say recycler view chat log and let's see, scroll to position. Now the position of your message is actually at the very end over here. And the way to get the last position is to simply say adapter, which contains all of your message groups right here, the message rows. And you can say dot count and just use item count. And I believe you want to probably use minus one like so. And so let me just quickly reload this inside of my app. And let's scroll up to the top and let's say CCC, hit the send, and you'll see that the message that we just sent automatically shows up at the very bottom of our recycler view. Alrighty everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson. And in the very next episode, we're gonna take a look at how we can build out this screen right over here, which is going to help us list out all of the latest messages for the currently logged in user. That's gonna be it for me today. Keep on coding guys, and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye-bye.